Elon Musk just made some nuts predictions about humanoid robotics. This one is an absolute cracker. Look, look it's going to take us a minute to put, make a billion robots, so, you know, they're all diverse people. Um, but, but I think we will, um, there will ultimately be billions, billions of humanoid robots. A way to think of it is who on earth would not want their own personal R2D2 C3PO? Like pretty much a bonus, you know, GPT street go. But even better. Like your personal helper buddy robot, it would be great. Teach your teach your kids, take your dog for a walk, get, get the groceries, you know, chat, chat, you know, protect you when you need it. Great. Um, and then how many robots would there be in industry? providing products and services. Probably three or four to one relative to humans, which suggests that total number of robots will be somewhere around, maybe as high as 40 billion, 40, 40 billion maybe, maybe 30 billion robots. It's a lot. So the Japanese company, I think it's Kukov, those robots that are used in manufacturing are 50,000, 100,000, 150,000, and you're describing a robot that's $20,000. We have to have a million a year to do that, or 10 million a year to get to $20,000. And is that something that's going to be affordable for people? Are they going to be rented? Are they going to be purchased? Corporations, are we going to get some kind of carried interest once they buy them from us? How is this going to work? Or don't we have the model yet? <laughs> well, my rough guess is that the cost of goods sold their labor and materials for Optimus after we reach a million units of steady state production. So call it a year after reaching a million units a year, because it takes a lot of effort to improve the cost. But I, at that point, I would expect the, the, bullet, the, the labor and materials to be twenty to thirty thousand dollars in current year dollars. I think that's, that's a pretty. I think that's a pretty safe estimate. When you're improving costs, so with cars, your idea is that everything we buy from other people to use in our cars, we know exactly how much it costs. And therefore, yes. we can tell someone how much we're going to pay for what we're buying from them. And if it doesn't, if they're making too much, then we make that stuff ourselves. Is that the same kind of idea we have in this robots, where we're going to, it should be much simpler to make than a car? Or am I wrong? Um, is it a hand? That the hand is the hand is extremely complex. There are fifty actuators in the hand, in the hand and forearm. The motor. Yeah, actuator is the motor, gearbox, and power electronics. So that's a hundred per robot. Really, a lot of butt actuators and sensors. Right? Am I getting that right? Approximately. Um, so. It, it, it's, it, there's a lot of complexity. Uh, Why is that important? Why is it important that we have such a complex hand? So, in order to do dexterous tasks, you have to have a hand with the sensitivity, precision, and degrees of freedom of a human hand. Because it's something that we find easy to do, like pick up a screwdriver or turn a wrench, or even thread a needle, or play the guitar, actually require a lot of dexterity. But one of the reasons we think we achieve sustainable abundance, which is the revised version of the company's goal, because it was accelerate sustainable energy, which as you mentioned, we've done that. Our new goal is sustainable abundance. So that's abundance for all in a way that is sustainable, that does not destroy any of the natural world. Events. How do we decide who gets what? Somebody wants to buy my house, they can just come in and start living there? Well, I'm not sure why. I mean, you do have a nice house, so. <laughs> I can certainly see the, see the appeal. Um, but um, the, the robots will be able to make anyone a house. And, uh, you know, as long as you don't just on it being in a particular location, you can have a 
Yeah, Rovers will be able to build you a castle if you want. So, and that, but the, the reason for hand dexterity is you want to be able to do surgery and precision medical actions. And so imagine a world where everyone has access to the best surgeons, literally everyone. And uh, Optimus will have the level of precision that is frankly superhuman and will be able to do medical procedures of, uh, of very sophisticated medical procedures, any medical procedure, perhaps things that, that really humans can't even do because they're too, they're too difficult. And that will be available to anyone. You know, people often talk about eliminating poverty and providing great medical care, but they never actually have a solution. And, and money doesn't solve it because there are only so many, there's a very limited number of great doctors and surgeons. They don't grow on trees. But now they, they will get built in factories. So I sent you a year or two ago an article about a young man who was in an interview in Barron's, and he was 33 at the time, and he'd become a portfolio manager, and he lost his legs to a, um, I knew it was a Paralympic performer, and he lost his legs to man-eating bacteria. And I said, is there anything we can do to get him out of the wheelchair? And you said, yes, there is. In three or four years, we can give him an Optimus body, and then we can use transistors in his head, in his brain, to let him function as a normal person, dance and sing and walk and run. Have we been able to make progress in that area? Yeah, so that's a confluence of two of my companies. One is being Neuralink, and the other being Tesla. So Neuralink is also making good progress. It now has, I think, over 10 patients with Neuralink implants. These people who didn't have the ability to move their arms or legs, in some cases, were completely locked in, like, like Stephen Hawking. And they can now communicate, I think, as quickly, almost as quickly as we're communicating right now, which is very cool. And that's going to continue to accelerate. So what we can do is use a Neuralink implant that is taking signals from the motor cortex of the brain and, and also receiving signals from this somatosensory cortex, and then give someone who's lost their legs, Optimus legs. And uh, so you'd be, <laughs> I mean, we're, we're really getting like the $6 million man here, I mean, from back in the day. I don't know if you watched that show, but I watched it. I watched it. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty fun. Yeah. You know? We can actually give someone superhuman cyborg capabilities, like the $6 million man, but less than $6 million. <laughs> Even in this day and age, I mean, six million dollars back then was a fortune. In these days, it's like nothing. Um, but, uh, but for much less than that, I mean, like for something that would be reasonable and affordable, it, it might be more like sixty thousand dollars type of thing. You can take signals from neural link in the mind that would be transmitting to the legs and transmit those to the attached Optimus robot legs, and you would actually be able to run faster than a human. Elon Musk combining Neuralink brain implants with Optimus robotic limbs to give paralyzed people humanoid abilities and predicting global demand of humanoid robots reaching 30 to 40 billion globally. The ambition of this project is like nothing we've ever seen before. Neuralink brain implants combined with Optimus robotic limbs can restore mobility to paralyzed people, taking signals from the motor cortex to control robot legs that could potentially run faster than biological humans. This stuff is absolutely nuts. It's quite crazy to think this isn't science fiction and it could be coming reality in the next few years. There are people out there who are completely paralyzed or locked in with a syndrome where they can't move or speak who are now able to communicate through thought alone. That's already happening with 10 neuroink patients. The next step would be taking those same brain signals and routing them through robot limbs instead of computer interfaces. The motor cortex sends signals to move your legs. When you're paralyzed, those signals still exist in your brain, but they can't reach your legs because the spinal cord is severed. Neuralink could read those signals directly from the brain. Currently, it's translating them into cursor movements or text, but those same signals could control robotic legs. But the crazy thing is Neuralink could also send signals back to the brain, creating a feeling of sensation. So you're not just controlling robot legs blindly, you can actually feel them 
perhaps as if the perhaps as if they were your own limbs. That's called biodirectional communication, which has the potential to make this feel really quite natural. Currently, losing your legs is obviously a devastating loss. Even with the best prosthetics, you're slower and less capable than before. With Optimus legs controlled by Neuralink, you have the ability to not just get back to the baseline, but to actually be an enhanced human beyond the normal capabilities. You could run faster, jump higher, and have more endurance because electric motors and batteries aren't going to fatigue like biological muscles. The medical applications extend far beyond mobility. Surgical precision with superhuman steadiness could be achieved by surgeons controlling robotic hands through Neuralink. People with degenerative muscle diseases could continue working and living independently long after their biological muscles fail. Elderly people could maintain strength and mobility indefinitely by transitioning to robotic assistance as biological capability declines. And the potential of a $60,000 price point makes this accessible rather than just for the wealthy. Currently, advanced prosthetics can cost 50 to 100K and don't provide anywhere near the functionality. That means millions of people paralyzed around the world could potentially access this technology, not just a privileged few. The convergence of two Elon companies, Tesla's robotics and Neuralink's brain interfaces, creates capabilities neither could achieve alone. Tesla builds the sophisticated robotic limbs with precise control and durability. Neuralink provides the brain-computer interface with bandwidth and reliability. Together, they solve a problem that's been science fiction for decades. But personal medical applications are just the beginning of what drives us to billions of robots. Reaching 30 to 40 billion robots globally makes sense when you realize everyone will want a personal helper. For daily tasks, plus industry could easily deploy three to four robots per human worker, creating use cases across every aspect of human life and economic activity. The 30 to 40 billion number sounds absurd until you break down the use cases. Start with personal robots, one per household globally. That's roughly 2 billion households worldwide, so 2 billion personal helper robots as a minimum. But many households will want multiple, one for general tasks, maybe one specialized for childcare, one for elderly care, one for security, and that could get you to 4 to 6 billion personal robots easily. Parents are constantly overwhelmed with tasks. A robot that handles groceries, meal prep, cleaning, and helps kids with homework is worth tens of thousands of dollars annually in time saved and not to mention avoiding costs such as childcare. That actually becomes less of a luxury purchase and becomes economically rational for middle-class families. The elderly care application alone could drive billions of robots. Global population is aging rapidly. By 2050, there will be 2 billion people aged over 60. Many will need assistance with daily activities, but want to stay in their homes rather than nursing facilities. A personal robot that helps with mobility, medication management, cooking, and provides companionship solves the elderly care crisis. That's potentially 1.2 billion robots just for elderly assistance. And then industrial deployment is where the numbers really explode. Current global workforce is around 3.5 billion people. If industry deploys three to four robots per human worker, that's 10 to 14 billion industrial robots. This isn't replacing human workers, it's augmenting them and expanding what's possible. A factory with 100 human workers might have three to 400 robots handling dangerous tasks, repetitive work, 24 seven operation, and precision assembly that humans can't do. Elon gives a construction example. Robots will be able to build you a castle, and this really signals the economic transformation. Currently, building a custom house costs two to four hundred dollars per square foot, largely due to labor costs. With robot construction crews working 24 7, costs could drop to materials plus energy. A 2,000 square foot house might cost 50K instead of 400K. That doesn't eliminate construction workers, it means they supervise robot crews and do the skilled finishing work robots can't handle yet. Agriculture is another massive use case. Global agriculture employs 1 billion people, mostly in developed countries, doing back-breaking manual labor. Robots can plant, weed, harvest, and process crops, which could increase agriculture productivity by 5 to 10x while eliminating some of the world's hardest physical labor. You might need 2 to 3 billion agricultural robots to serve global food production. Healthcare robotics could add another 2 to 3 billion units annually. 
every hospital, clinic, nursing home, and medical practice could use robots for patient care, surgery assistance, medication delivery, and routine procedures. Service industry deployment adds billions more. Restaurants, hotels, retail stores, warehouse, logistics centers, every service business could use robots for cleaning, stocking, customer service, and operations. The three to four robots per human worker ratio makes sense because humans and robots are complementary. Humans do creative work, decision-making, customer interaction, and skilled judgment. Robots do repetitive tasks, dangerous work, precision operations, and 24-7 monitoring. You don't replace the human worker, you give them a team of robot assistants that multiply their productivity. The path to 30 to 40 billion is straightforward. Four to six billion personal home robots, 10 to 14 billion industrial manufacturing robots, two to three billion agricultural robots, two to three billion healthcare robots, three to five billion service industry robots, two to three billion construction robots, and several billion more for specialized applications like mining, energy, infrastructure, and not to mention defense. Add those up and 40 billion is conservative if robots actually work well and costs reach 20 to 30K per unit. YouTube isn't just entertainment, it's one of the best client acquisition tools because it builds trust at scale. We've helped businesses grow from scratch to a $100,000 a month just by launching them a YouTube channel. Book a call with me below and let's see how YouTube could help your business scale.